In this video, we're going to continue our conversation on building control concepts, and we're going to talk about some control information, some control strategies, control logic, and control algorithms. Understand, these videos are a high-level view. And as you get into building controls, you or your employer will send you will go through further training and narrow this material down for the exact control system you're going to work with. So just keep that in mind as we go through here. So let's look at the definition of control information first. It's information sent and received by various parts of the system that make for meaningful system operation. Hardware and software used to provide control information includes control points, virtual points, offset, and deadband. So overall, control information is the total communications between the various parts of the system. Control points are information received from sensors and sent to actuators creates control points in the building. A control point is the actual value that a control system experiences at any given time. Control points can change over time and may be different than set points and desired values. So a control point could be an input sensor like a thermostat, could be sensing um, valve position, could be actuating a valve. An input control point is the thermostat or a pressure sensor. It's collecting information and sending it to a controller. An output control point may be a damper actuator or a valve or perhaps a fan control. A virtual point is a control point that exists only in the software. There's no physical sensor for a virtual point. An example of a virtual point could be the occupied and unoccupied settings for a room or building. They change the actions of the HVAC system and possibly lighting, but there's not a physical sensor for occupied, unoccupied. It's scheduled in the software, but it is still a control point. Virtual control points can be used to contain snapshots, like a moment in time, of other control points. For example, there may be three different temperature sensors. Those are actual control points. A virtual control point may be designed to record the highest temperature sensed from those sensors in 24 hours. So a virtual control point is exactly that. It's a control point that does not have a physical presence. It's only in the software. Set points is the desired condition to be maintained. The whole purpose of a control system is to maintain certain conditions. The set point is the desired condition. There can be more than one set point for a control point. For example, a temperature control point may have an unoccupied and an occupied set point. The set point has to match the variable type of the control point. In other words, if the set point is temperature, the control point must also be looking at temperature. Set points can be based on reset can be reset based on other conditions. For example, the hydronic heating boiler water temperatures can be raised or lowered to save energy costs based on outside temperature. This could be outdoor reset. Another example, the fresh air intake can be adjusted based on outside temperatures, carbon dioxide in the building, and or outdoor humidity. Offsets are the difference between the current value of the control point and the equivalent set point for that control point. Offset is, measure, is a measurement of accuracy and can also be referred to as the error. Offsets should be minimized as much as possible. Offsets can be positive or negative. The controller should adjust until the offset reaches zero. On newer building management systems and technology allow an offset of plus or minus 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The control system accuracy is a function of the accuracy of the controllers, the precision of the sensors, 
and actuators and the quality of the building design and tuning. Dead band is another measurement. In many cases, it's not necessary to maintain an exact set point. In fact, many times it would be too expensive to maintain an exact set point. In this case, the controlled variable must remain within a range. The range is defined by a pair of set points. The range is a dead band between two set points in which no control action takes place. An example of this would be the temperature within a space must be maintained between 70 and 74 degrees. At 70 degrees, the heating system operates. At 74 degrees, the cooling system operates. The 4 degrees be between the 70 and the 74 is the dead band. This happens frequently with auto changeover thermostats. As long as it does not affect occupant comfort, the dead band can provide energy savings. It can also reduce frequent cycling of the system. So moving on to control strategies. A control strategy is a method for optimizing the control of a building system equipment. The optimum outcome is one that fulfills the requirements of the sequence of operation, such as maintaining comfort, indoor conditions, and lighting, while minimizing energy use, equipment wear and tear, and manual interaction. Strategies are chosen based on the particular layout of the building, the type, the number, and location of control devices, the use of the building, and the building owner's priorities. Cost, accuracy, comfort, and code requirements all play a role in the chosen control strategy. One of these strategies is set point control. Set point control maintains conditions in a building based on a given set point. Set points can be temperature, humidity, pressure, light level, dew point, and enthalpy. Set point control is the most common building control strategy. Setback control is used when a building's temperatures change for the times a building is unoccupied. The setback is the unoccupied heating and cooling set point. Setback control is used in buildings where the temperature is a primary set point. It allows energy savings when the building is unoccupied, but still prevents excessively hot and cold temperatures. Setback control reduces the time that it takes for a building to reach its occupied set point. Rather than just turn a system off while the building is unoccupied, what we can do is change the temperature so that we don't have to do as much cooling or heating when the building is about to become occupied again. There's energy savings involved. Reset control is a control strategy where the set point is changed based on another condition. Again, the boiler water temperature may be reset based on the outdoor air temperature. The colder the outside conditions, the warmer the boiler water temperature. We can also do this with chi cooling. Okay, chilled water systems. Do I need as much cold water if the temperature outside is cooler? No, I can reset and save some energy. A set point schedule is a description of the amount of reset variable changes from a primary set point. A reset schedule is a chart that describes the set point changes in a pneumatic control system. Pneumatic control systems are air-based. Another type of control strategy is low high limit control. Low limit and high limit control ensures that a control point remains within a certain range. Low limit control is a control strategy that adjusts the system to maintain a control point above a certain value. High limit control is a control strategy that adjusts the system to maintain a control point below a certain value. There's two examples. Low limit control, if the air conditioning coil temps drops below 38 degrees, the controller shuts down the compressor. This is called freeze protection. High limit control, if the hot water temperature reaches 210 degrees, the controller shuts off the boiler. High limit set points. So high and low limit control are part of everyday system. We just don't often think of them as a control strategy. 
Lead lag control is a control strategy in which two or more pieces of similar equipment are used in the same system. A great example of this is water pumps for a chilled or hot water system. The lead lag control starts one pump, but if for some reason the primary pump does not start, the secondary pump will be started. The pumps rotate between which is primary and which is secondary. Refrigeration compressors and air compressors can also be lead lag controlled. High and low le l signal select is a control strategy in which the building automation system selects the highest or lowest value among multiple inputs for a control decision. Most common applications of this control strategy is a building in which multiple temperature sensors are within a zone. The highest signal represents the warmest area. The lowest represents the coolest area. The automation system uses these to reset the heating and cooling set points. Averaging control is the final control strategy. It collects an average from a number of inputs. This strategy is used when the high and low values of multiple sensors do not accurately represent the building overall. For example, a temperature sensor in the lobby is affected by the opening and closing of the doors. Averaging sensors in some cases is more reflective of the overall zone conditions. So now we've talked about the control strategies, let's talk a little bit about the control logic. Control logic is the decision the controllers make to change the operation of the building involves control logic. Control logic is the portion of the controller's software that produces the calculated outputs based on the inputs. We've already, in a prior video, talked about logic. The control logic uses this decision-making process in a control loop. The control loop is a continuous represent repetition of control logic decisions. Just because it checks sensor temperature once doesn't mean it doesn't do it again. It's continuous. There are two types of control loops that we're worried about. We have what's known as an open control loop, and then we have a closed loop control. Open loop control is where there's no feedback occurring between the controller, sensor, and the control device. Feedback is a measurement of the result of a control action by the sensor. For example, a controller turns on a water pump when the temperature reaches 60 degrees. The controller has no way of knowing if that pump is actually on. The most frequent use of open loop control is based on time schedules. Time-based control is a control strategy in which the time of day is used to determine the desired of operation of the load. Time-based control turns the load on or off at specific times of the day without any other knowledge of other things the load, loads may need to operate. Closed loop control is our most frequent control loops. Most essential control loops include feedback. Closed loop control is where the feedback occurs between the controller, the sensor, and the control device. A closed loop control is the control system in which the result of an output is fed back to the controller as an input. An example of closed loop control is a thermostat controls the position of a valve in a hot water terminal device or heater. This is to maintain the air temperatures at a set point. The thermostat in the building space provides the feedback of the air temperature that is used to continually adjust the valve position to maintain the correct space temperature. Closed loop control. Now, control algorithms are used to determine the necessary output value based on the inputs. A control algorithm is a set of calculations. This allows the building automation system to achieve a high level of accuracy. Control algorithms are determined when the device is initially installed and configured. Common algorithms are proportional, integral, derivative, and adaption. Each one of these has different characteristics of accuracy, stability, and response time. 
Sometimes we'll take these common algorithms and group them together to increase accuracy and stability. Proportional control is an algorithm that is a direct analog response to the offset from the set point. For example, if the temperature of a room is 10 degrees from the set point, the chilled water valve will open 10%. It's based on the set point offset and the desired proportion, which is also called throttling parameters. These control systems have a lower tendency to overshoot and undershoot than other systems because it's a direct proportional response. Integral control algorithms are control algorithms in which the output is determined by the sum of the offset over time. The time period used for the calculations change the results. These systems have a tendency to move the system towards the set point faster than proportional systems. Overshoot is possible because the calculations include errors from the past. Now, we can combine proportional integral for PI control. PI control is a combination of the proportional and integral algorithms and is generally more stable and accurate than the integral alone. Derivative control algorithms are based on the instantaneous rate of change from a variable. As the input approaches a set point, then the output amount is reduced early to allow the input to coast to a set point. An example of this would be a hot water coil in an air handler. As the space temperature gets close to the set point, we can reduce the valve position of the hot water coil and we can slowly allow that to make it to set point so we don't overshoot. However, there's a problem here. This, if improperly set up, this algorithm can cause a noise in a signal and the system can become unstable. In other words, if we try to do this closing and adjustment too fast, we can actually make a system unstable where it, where it just doesn't maintain temperature at all. So what the final solution on this is to provide proportional, integral, and derivative control in a control algorithm called PID. It's a combination of these three algorithms. The offset is calculated from feedback from the building system that's used as an input. The offset is then used in separate proportional, integral, and derivative calculations. The result of these three calculations are added together to achieve an output value. PID combination improves stability and gives more precise control. Only extremely sensitive control applications require PID control. Most often, PI control is adequate. Adaptive control is the final control algorithm we're going to talk about. Adaptive control algorithms are algorithms that are automatically adjusting themselves based on environmental conditions. The result is increased accuracy and stability and is simpler to implement. Adaptive control is often used in air handling units along with outdoor temperatures, taking into account seasonal changes. We can adjust dampers, valves, water temperatures, and first, second stage cooling based on outdoor conditions, which as we know, affects the building's ability to get, lose and gain heat through its walls and windows and doors.